All right, welcome back to another episode of Straight Like That, the podcast hosted by Instagram's favorite half brown boy, your boy Camille. Um, real quick before I intro the 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 new guest today, I got to shout out the sponsor, uh, Rory Love and Company, little candle, wax, and room spray company based out of New Orleans. Um, you know, it's always a little token gift you can give to a loved one, uh, you know, significant other, friend, whatever you want to do. But yeah, check them out, link in bio, all that. Um, today's guest, I can't even. The 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 list of accolades this man got, I can't even. I don't got enough time to go ahead and wrap it all out. But we got Dallas's very own, LAFC's very own, and the U.S. men's national team's very own, Kel Acosta. What's going on, Kel? What up? What up? Appreciate you having me. No nah, man, I appreciate you it's taking honor, time. It's an honor being here. So I'm glad <laughs> I could be uh, part of the the long guest list. Man, I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Thank you for taking the time, joining us, and you know, just talking ball. So let's get straight to it. Basically, why why football? Why soccer? How'd you get into it? Yeah, I mean, football was was one of my first sports. Uh, actually, t ball was my first one, but I hated it. It was it was so boring. <laughs> and football, um, you know, I grew up in in Plano, Texas, where Texas most people don't know is predominantly uh, American football sports. So for me, playing playing soccer, if you will is uh, something that was very different but it was a sport that just I just fell in love with from the beginning I mean it, it was helpful that I excelled at a young age so that that helped me you know just really enjoy it and as I started you know just playing more and more I, I looked more in depth into the sport I you know I grew up I loved watching Rubinho and Ronaldinho across mm -hmm. the I loved Eddie Johnson who played locally at FC Dallas and Dallas Burn at the time I mean, he was just a player that looked like me. So I'm like, oh, yeah. he, that's cool. And it was just someone that just resonated with me because he looked like me. He was young. He was hungry, confident. And then from then on, I mean, I just kind of just 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 made my way up. I mean, I played youth ball there in Dallas. Um, my first team was called, I think it was called the Wolves. You know, everyone has those <laughs> those random little rec club rec yeah. team. It was called the Wolves. Then I moved on to the Hot Shots. Hot shots to the blitz, so on and so forth. And yeah, I mean, I, I in in Dallas, I mean, I didn't play for bigger clubs. I grew up, I played at the same club A to Z to Longhorn to ASG with the same coach. Um, my whole career. It wasn't until I was like 12 or 13, I was like, okay, I need to really take take this game to the next level if mm -hmm. I really want to take that next step. And so that's when I joined the, the FC Dallas Academy. Okay. And so um, joined the academy around like 13, 14, um, you know, played a year there. And then I moved to Florida. Uh, I was part of the residency program with the national team. So I went to IMG for a couple of years, okay. um, played at the U-17 World Cup. I was the youngest member of the team in the U-17 World Cup. Uh, we we played in, in Mexico. Um, and then when I came back, I was around like 16 years old. And, um, you know, shortly after I came back from the, the World Cup, about a month later, right before my 17th birthday, I signed my first professional contract with FC Dallas. Jeez. And so 16 and some change going on 17. And yeah, it was kind of a whirlwind. And that's when just like the real world started for me. Um, that's when it's like you go from being this young boy to being thrown in with men yeah. and being, you know, underneath the microscope. And for me, it was it was tough in a sense because I'm like, like, damn, like this is, this is real. This is what always what I wanted to do this is what I dreamed of, but actually being able to achieve it was one thing. And now I'm like, I'm playing alongside these guys that are double my age. Yeah. And, you know, they're, you know, you know, locker room talk, they talking about all these certain things that were foreign to me. Yeah, talking, yeah. Oh, I don't even want to talk about it. It's locker room talk, but you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you talking about, you know, this, that, and the other, whoop, whoop, whoop. I'm like, man, like, I'm talking about like, I can't wait to get some Wendy's after this. <laughs> and I was like, this is crazy. And guys that, you know, I idolize just watching growing up. Now they become, you know, my teammates and obviously competition because I'm fighting for their spot as well. Yeah, and so just have that, have that dynamic just, just totally switch in a blink of an eye, which is a bit crazy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, I'm 16, I'm young. I turned 17, made my debut at 17. Um, and yeah, it was just a ride. I mean, I was very fortunate. I, you know, made my debut under Shellis Hindman. Um, and I was kind of just fortunate because some guys just got injured and it was my opportunity to step up. 
And I knew like once I got my opportunity, I just don't want it to go to waste. Right. And then on, I mean, I just kind of made my way. Um, you know, I just became a starter since then. And I was able to play in a couple of U-20 World Cups. Uh, I played up with the 93s. I was playing like a few years up. And that that U-20 World Cup was crazy because um, we had like the group of death. Um, mm. it, our, our group was France, Ghana, and Spain. Jesus and the France Christ. team had Pogba, Umtiti, Digne, Varane, all these dudes. And I'm like, man. Damn, so you played <laughs> against them. Yeah, I I didn't play any. I was there, but I didn't play. The okay. team the team played. I was in the, I was a younger guy. It was kind of experienced. I didn't play to the next U twenty World Cup in New Zealand. Okay. It was my age, but I was just there, just seeing all these guys up close, and these mm-hmm. guys like you know breaking into the first team. Pogba was already playing with the senior team with mm-hmm. France. And I'm like, damn, like this is this guy is is real. This guy's a real deal. Next yeah, he up, like that. <laughs> yeah, he really liked that. He really liked that. Um. It was just crazy just seeing him. And this is dynamic because, one, like, you see him walking around the hotel. Their team is doing their own thing. He's in the back with his beats on, just jamming out, just in his own world. Wow. It was, it was just crazy to me. Just even on the field, like, the coach said something to him, and he was yelling back at the coach. And I was like, damn. <laughs> like, damn. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's Pogba, for real. Um, damn. But, yeah, man, I mean, it. yeah, it's just – I'm just – Step by step, you know, I went from U-17 World Cup to two U-20s. And then, you know, the ultimate goal was to play in the Senior World Cup. And mm-hmm. I was able to, to achieve that last December um, the World Cup in Qatar. And that was just a dream come true. And just one of those things where, you know, I'm, you know, a five-year-old kid, four-year-old kid, barely getting into the sport mm-hmm. to, to now being at 28, playing in a Senior World Cup. I mean, it's one of those things where, like you sometimes you gotta pinch yourself. It's like there's been a lot of stuff that um, you know, there's been some good times and bad times, but this ride has been worth it to to right. achieve that. And you know, I still got some years left in my career, so I'm hoping to achieve oh, much sure. more. But yeah, I was kind of bouncing around all around my career, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it's been uh it's been it's been quite a ride, but I've been enjoying every bit of it. Yeah, 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 for sure. Let's take it back then to when you were like 11, 12, when you realized like the rec ball kind of not it no more. You kind of until, you know. Yeah. Well, I, I played club ball. I mean, rec ball, I stopped probably, I don't know, seven, eight. And then it went to like okay. club select. Um, but it wasn't like, so there's like tiers, right? It goes rec to club, club to academy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was one of those things where, you know, I my coach kind of sat me down as well because I was really close with him as well and their family. Mm-hmm. He's like, you know, you're at the level like this, we're just holding you back. Like you really need to take that next jump okay. if you really want to explore this. And I'm like, you know, you're right. Like I, I need, you know, another challenge, another step, because ultimately this is something that I feel that, you know, I can achieve. Right. And, um, you know, only way I can achieve that is taking this, this next jump, this leap of faith of going into the academy. Mm-hmm. So uh, a guy that I played with um, back at when we were way younger, Marco Carrizales, um, I was good friends with him and his family. And he was the one he was already at FC Dallas. Okay. And he and just my parents talking to his family. And I was able to have that connection with the academy. And I met with Oscar Pereja and Chris Hayden. Um, you know, they've been they've been watching me for some time now, but I wasn't ready to make that move yet. But I was finally ready. And then I got my first taste of just the academy and just the level was just completely different. The environment, everything, everyone was just so focused, driven, everyone mm-hmm. was super competitive. And it was just the, the the right step that I needed to 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 go in the direction where I wanted to be. For sure, for sure. So then you were playing, you know, at that next level. How'd you make that jump to to IMG then? What was that like? Yeah, it was just one of those things where it, it was a big crazy because I was already playing youth national team. I went through ODP, so I went through all the steps from um, state team to to region team, region region team to region camp, region camp to national team. Mm-hmm. So I worked my way up. So I was already in the U14s, U15s, and then the next up was U17s. And so I was able to have the opportunity to go to IMG for two for a couple of years, and that was a that was a huge jump for me. And in mm-hmm. terms of not only just playing soccer wise. But I was leaving my family and friends behind. Man, yeah, I was about to ask that. Texas. 
-hmm. and I'm going into Florida, one, not really knowing anything, two, being on my own. And I'm like, I'm only, I, I went to IMG when I was like 13, I was like 13, 14. And you were by yourself out there, like your family didn't come. Yeah, with we were you? just like, yeah, no, no one was out there. We lived on a campus. I was just like with my teammates and the other kids that that play their respective sports, right uh, there as well. I don't know how familiar you are with IMG. It's a whole mm -hmm. sports school that has now it has like football, golf, basketball. Mm -hmm. uh, they have their own soccer program, um, but I was part of the the national team program, so we had our our own program there. Okay, and yeah, so I'm like I'm. It's almost like you, I get thrown into a college environment as a thirteen year old, where yeah, I'm kind of child. We, we have like we have like chaperones and that, but still like I can go to bed at whatever time. I can yeah. eat kind of whatever I wanted to eat. It was just I had yeah. I had to adopt these responsibilities just in an instant, and I had to be able to to really just adapt to to what IMG was. And, you know, if I really want to take things serious, I need to really lock it in and lock it down. And I mean, that was tough because, you know, I'm a kid, like I'm young, I'm, I'm barely in high school. Like, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, girl crazy. I want to do all <laughs> these things I want to, you know, you just want to live yeah. life as just like a normal yeah. teenager. teenager. Man. And yeah. I'm like, this is, it's really different in this sense because I'm here focusing on sport. And my and my goal is to play in the U seventeen World Cup. So mm -hmm. all my time and energy is dedicated to that. Thanks. And so that was that was just very different in a sense, but it was an experience that that truly helped me. It just helps me mature, mm -hmm. not only just on the field field wise, but just off the field wise. I've really um, had to just learn a lot of things. Like I was washing my own clothes. I was doing all sorts. I was like, man, this is this is wild. This is different. Yeah. But it was enjoyable it really I, I i really had a a great just moment as a reflection of just this is what i want to do this is where i want to be in and this is just how i want to just just grow up and how this is the things i need to learn to really be a man in a sense so i really yeah. at 13 i was feeling like i was 18 already mm -hmm. i put five years onto my life so i thought that was uh it was just a, just a really cool experience all around yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like that experience isn't really talked that much in public in terms of like the off the field stuff. Everyone talks about, you know, the game and, you know, training and intensity and all that. No one's talking about like you're by yourself. And especially like if you're moving like across the country or, you know, from Texas or wherever to Florida, you know, a state you don't know nobody, you're there by yourself. No one really knows like, you know, you got to wash your own stuff. You got to like, you know, have that discipline at like 12, 13, 14. Right. And I mean, my, my friends became, you know, my teammates, but also my teammates were also my competition. Yeah. And so it's like, it goes hand. I mean, obviously everyone knows that the, at the level is competitive, but like the ultimate goal is to play in the U-17 World Cup. And mm -hmm. in a sense, like, obviously you're, you're cool with everyone. You have good moments, but at the same time, you know, you know how it goes. You know, sometimes like when you have like bad moments, you know, when you're training, you can bring that home and reset. But for me, you you live it every single day because mm -hmm. you're in that environment consistently. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was tough to kind of, you know, separate the two because they just followed you. And obviously mm -hmm. not having your support system right then and there was obviously difficult. I mean, yeah, I can make a phone call to my mom and dad or to my friends, but it's not the same with them actually being presently yeah, there. 100%. And um, that, that was difficult, but... Yeah, it just helped me to be able to to cope with things in a different way and able to really take things into my own hands. And in that sense, I really matured. Okay. And you were there for what, two years? Yeah, I was there for, yeah, like a year and a half, two years, something like that. Okay. And then you went back to Dallas to the academy? Right to the academy, right after. Okay. And then how long were you in the academy up until you start playing with the senior squad? So I joined the academy. So I was in IMG for... A year and a half so i was like 15 i think when i came back so i was in the academy for like a couple of years okay and so when i when i first signed at 16 um i wasn't quite playing yet so i was able to play with the academy i was i was signed to a first team contract but i was able to play with the the academy okay um, and i also there was a reserve team as well so i was playing games with both and so you know with a mix of like a couple of years and then was when i was like really like 
17 ish is when I was really breaking into the first team. I was playing consistently. Mm-hmm. And so I wasn't playing with the academy anymore. Okay. And talk about your first season, you know, with the senior squad playing, you know, real competition, grown men and everything like that. Like, was it a, a big jump? No, definitely. Definitely. Because, you know, it's just like anything. You don't want some little kid taking your job. Yeah. And you don't want some <laughs> young kid, you know, killing you on the field either. Right. Right. And so I, I faced difficulties in that sense where obviously um, you got competitive teammates that's mm-hmm. saying, how, how is this kid going to take away from food on my table mm-hmm. and my paychecks? And and then on the other side of it, when I'm actually in the game, being competitive, playing against guys that are 30 years old and I'm really getting, giving them a run for their money, they don't like that either. So they're saying all sorts of things that, you know, all these curse words and that I'm like, I didn't even, I didn't even heard of some of these words before. <laughs> so, you know, talking about you effing this, effing, I'm like, hey, man, why you got so hey, much chill out, man. hate in you? You waking up with this much hate in your heart. Like, this is, like, this is wild. Um, hey, that just means you were, you were doing something. Different. You were yeah, doing not, something. Not, but for real, but like, it just like, you know, you go from playing like Academy where like, yeah, like, you know, like, people calling you like a dummy and stuff like that, that don't really hurt you, but people really yeah. saying like some, some real stuff to you. You're like, yeah. damn, this is, <laughs> this is different. But yeah. And that's since from the trash talk to the physicality, to the speed of play and kind of all those things were, were a big jump and I had to bring it each and every day. But mm-hmm. as you know, games went on, I became more and more comfortable because I think when I first started, I bet you the first, 15 games I was having butterflies I was super nervous I didn't yeah I was I was going into games like okay keep it simple don't make a mistake you know be super tight I'm telling all these things in my head and you know after I you know played my first like 15 games the 16th game I don't know it was just like this thing where it just like click like it is I just felt kind of just free I just felt I just felt confident and comfortable. I don't know what it, it was just kind of just like a switch where it's like, I'm really enjoying myself now. Like this is fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's blessed. Yeah. So I thought it was just, it was just cool just to have that feeling of just like, okay, this, it went from, you know, being, or well, I mean, you, you look at it in, in, in like a different perspective. Like when you're playing youth ball, you're playing for fun. Right. right? Enjoying it, enjoying the moment. You're not thinking much of it. You're hanging out with your friends. You're playing to win, but you're enjoying it. And then, like, my first, like, year at Pro, I'm, like, I'm looking at it as a job. Like, you know, I'm trying to make money. I'm trying to be on the field. And I feel like after I, I like I said, I hit those fifth, first 15 games, I went back to being, like, a kid. Like, I'm enjoying yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's having that different perspective just really just helps me. Not really looking at it in the lens of like, okay, I'm trying to get paid, trying to do this, trying to buy that. I'm just like, I just love being here and then taking yeah. it for what it is. I like fans knowing my name and people cheering and really enjoying what I bring to the game. And I really found enjoyment in that. And that really was was helpful for me to just really fall in love with the game again. Yeah, 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 for sure. And so I guess, you know, you you're you're playing and everything. Was there like a moment where it was like, you know, you hear this like welcome to the league type nonsense, like where someone makes a hard challenge on you or something like that. Did you have like that moment in a game or something where you're like, damn, like nah, I'm here? Um, I'm trying to think. I think my my biggest one, welcome to the league, was I was playing as Landon Donovan. Right, he was playing for the Galaxy at the time, Damn. and like I grew up watching you since I was young, and right. you you've really done so much for for the sport in the U.S. for our national team, and like we're going one on one against each other. Damn, like it's like <laughs> it's like it's like either you got to eat or be eaten type right. deal. Right, what's that? And, what's that lyric that Drake says? Is uh, when your idols become rivals. Yeah, like legit. That's like what it was. And I'm like thinking in my head, I'm like, I'm really not trying to be on this man's highlight reel. <laughs> I'm really not trying to be on YouTube and see myself getting cooked. So I'm like, I, I better go to work. <laughs> yeah, and how'd you fare? And I'm like, I thought I did decently well because I was yeah. like, 
one, I don't want to get in a foot race with this guy because he's yeah. quick. Yeah. Two, it's like, you know, you know what it is when you're on you're on I you're on an island mm. and you stranded one on one with no help because no one wants to be part of that either. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm trying to limit those interactions because, you know, I mean, a guy of his caliber, I mean, obviously, mm-hmm. you know, give him, you know, five opportunities, he's gonna he's gonna make the most of them yeah you don't want to give him five i was like trying to just be physical as possible Mm -hmm. you know get in his face be annoying be that Mm -hmm. kind of like you know if you ever have like a younger brother be that like pest yeah always here always in his face annoy him off his game Mm -hmm. and i know that if i can annoy him enough i'm able to to get right in there and really and really um play to my advantages and obviously um you know help <laughs> help uh uh cope with what he's bringing to the game and i yeah. thought i thought I fared pretty well in that matchup and i was able to to swap jerseys with him after the game so i was a special oh moment. damn that's dope yeah, yeah. damn that's full circle right there yeah for real for right real. so you in uh you in dallas for how many seasons in total uh i don't know like six maybe oh i mean with the senior squad it was six with senior squad yeah six or seven something like that oh shit Okay, so while you're there, when like did you hear anything about you getting a call potentially with the national team? Yeah, so it was like so this was after my second U twenty World Cup. And okay. so I'm I'm probably like 18, 19 years old, nineteen. And um, you know, I'm playing outside back. And it was actually this day, I remember it vividly because it was a special day for me. It was like in December. I don't know what the actual date. But it was a huge day because I just bought my first house. Oh wow! And so, and how old were you? I was like, like twenty maybe. God, <laughs> I think something like that. Uh, yeah, like twenty. Yeah, twenties. Wow. Going on 20. And yeah, I just bought my first house, right? And it was a huge moment. I'm like ecstatic. My mm-hmm. arm is is super tired because there's like a lot of paperwork you got to sign. <laughs> and I had like a missed call. Missed call from like some number in in LA. And I'm not thinking much of it. I'm like, damn, these these telemarketers would be really annoying. So <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm just gonna ignore it. Yeah. Yada yada yada. And then I get a random call from my current coach at the time, Oscar Pereja. Mm-hmm. And he calls me and he's like, Hey, um, just want to talk with you. Um, got some really great news for you. Um, the coach for the national team called and he wants to bring you into January camp in a few weeks. Wow. And he's like, um, just be by your phone. Should be expecting a call soon. And um, no, I'm just like, huh? <laughs> like come so again? Like, came out, of out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. I don't know. I oh, mean, wow. obviously you, you, you hope to be there, but you don't really think that there's real eyes on you and you're really going to have an opportunity to, mm-hmm. to, to do that. And, um, you know, I, I see the missed call and there's a voicemail and I listened to the voicemail. It was Jurgen Klinsman, coach of the national team. He was the one that called me when I thought I was a tele- telemarketer. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I give him a call back and he was just talking to me like, oh, he's been watching me for some time. He's like, he's you know, really happy with my progress. He wants to bring me in. And, and I was like, damn, I couldn't say yes quick enough, man. I right. was just excited. I was super happy. Got off the phone, called my parents, let them know, like literally in a couple of weeks time, I'm going to be with the senior team. I'm going to be with Jermaine Jones, Michael Bradley, Clint Dempsey. These guys are going to be yeah. at camp and I'm going to be out there. Like, this is, this is for real. Wow. So talk about that, then talk about that camp. You know, you coming in at what twenty years old, first one. Yeah, I'm like twenty. I don't even remember. That's how long. I think I might have been like twenty one, maybe twenty twenty one. Okay. Um. Yeah, and I'm like thinking, I go from playing in the senior team, and or for for FC Dallas to I'm making I'm like have a potential to make my senior team debut, but I'm like that's still a long shot. I'm like, I'm just a young kid here. They're trying to probably just give me some experience. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Sure I'm trying to enjoy the ride. You know, I walk into to, to the meal room, and I see Michael. I see Josie. I see Jermaine. I see Tim. And they're, like, saying hello to me. And, you know, they're calling me by my first name. And I'm, like, kind of just taken aback because I'm like, yeah. you guys know who I am. Yeah. Type of- <laughs> 
is I guess it's crazy, right? Like it's different between saying like, oh hey, what's up? To like, yo, Kellen, like, how's everything going? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like how's Dallas? Like really knowing about me and curious of my experiences. And and I thought it was just super cool, not only just like you said, the idols become come your teammates to your rivals type mm-hmm. deal, but them actually really taking pay attention to me, asking about my family me getting to know them just more than just like the soccer level, knowing about their family, their interests. Yeah, more I, personal. I was just super cool and just really able to just absorb and learn so much from them. I thought that was just was really cool and just being under Jurgen as well, learning from him because he's played at the highest of levels and coached mm-hmm. you know, top teams. And it was just crazy. Just being – I was just like – like I said, I was just happy to be there type mm-hmm. dude. I wasn't thinking much. I knew it was a great opportunity, but I was just so excited. Like I'm, you know, putting on this shirt. And I'm like, man, this shirt feels heavy. Like this is, this is not a youth team. This is not a youth national team. Yeah. This is not playing for the Wolves when I was five years old. Like this is <laughs> a senior team. Like, this jersey is different. Yeah. Like, it was just, it was just super exciting. I feel like at first, like I was just trying to tread lightly mm-hmm. because I'm, you know, I'm 20 years old. I'm trying to find common ground with these guys, right? Like I'm not in the same conversations with them. They're talking about stocks and houses and, you know, their kids. And I'm like, man, your kids are almost the same age as me type deal. (laughs) And I'm like, you know, it was hard having conversations with them because all I knew was soccer. Soccer is all I knew. And so, you know, I don't want to be that annoying kid. That's all I could talk about. Like I, it was hard for me to hold conversations because I'm like, I don't know what else. I mean, they're not going to be talking about like Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Like, <laughs> and they're not talking about this story. The thing is like, so what, like, how can I really connect with these guys? Thanks. 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 It's but, some grown up shit. Know, they, but it was cool. Cause they were just including me with everything. And I was just able to absorb so much. And, you know, at that time we had roommates. Um, I forgot who was my first roommate. I think it was maybe, it was my first roommate of that camp. I don't remember, but I just remember I was with Lee Nguyen and Luis Robles. And so whenever they went, cause we had a lot of team dinners mm-hmm. uh, on our own. And so they always invited me out. So I was always with them. So I felt I, that they really helped me because if I didn't get invited by them, I was just going to be eating like Chipotle in my room yeah, by, <laughs> <so>. <laughs> <laughs> by myself. So I was like, they were inviting me out. They were just showing me around. And I thought that was super cool. And I was able to feel more and more comfortable. Yeah. And, you know, that camp was just super dope because, like I said, I was just happy to be there. And it wasn't into, until, like, I was just going through training. Nothing happened. I thought I would perform pretty well. I was holding my own. I felt like mm-hmm. I was part of the team, but I never thought that I was going to be able to make my debut in that same camp. And it wasn't until I was in the in the uh, press conference that I found out that I was going to start. And I was like, because the, the reporter asked me, like, oh, Jurgen was talking about, um, he was in here. He's like, yeah, we're going to give you, give Kellen his first start. Like, how do you feel about that? And I was like. And that was the first time you hearing about you starting? Yeah. <laughs> so how, how did you time. answer that? I would have been all kinds of messed up. I was like, oh, first. Yeah, I was like, oh, the coach hasn't said anything, but it would be – or no, they they didn't say, like, what would it mean? They said, like, what it mean to 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 make your debut? Mm-hmm. And then then Jurgen told me after the presser that that I was going to start. And mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, it would be a dream come true. I've always dreamt of this moment to be with the national teams, obviously to play alongside some of the, the U.S., you know, great players. Um, super grateful. I'm super happy to be here. I worked hard for this moment, but – you know, it's something you always dream of and, you know, hoping to achieve at this camp, something along those lines. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I have that confirmation knowing that I'm going to start in my first game versus I think it was against uh, Iceland. I was like, couldn't even believe it. Couldn't even was believe it. in the U.S.? So nervous. Yeah, it was in California. Damn. And I mean, I had my first two starts, first two caps in that. And I played against Iceland and I played against Canada. And you started both games? Started both games. Damn. Yeah. That's a successful camp right there, then. Bro, I was, I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I didn't think much of it. I was like, I'm just, right. you know, I'm just enjoying it. Like, this is yeah. fun. You know, I'm learning so much from these guys. I'm getting to know people. These guys know my name. I'm learning yeah. as a coach. I'm here in sunny California. We got per diem. They were getting, we were getting paid in cash. And I was like, 
life is good, man. Like, I'm enjoying it, man. Sign me up. Right. Uh, but yeah, bro. Like it was just, it was, it was nuts. It was nuts. Damn. All right. So you're talking about your, your first camp. Um, obviously it was successful. Two games, two starts, you play well, you go back to Dallas, you play, and then correct me if I'm wrong, that summer's the gold cup. Uh, 2016. Yeah, that's a gold cup. Yeah, that was a gold cup. That was a gold cup. Okay, and were you playing in that gold cup? Yeah, I was playing. I was starting. I was playing most. Well, I'm trying to think. 26. Oh, wow. maybe, maybe, oh, maybe the next year, next the following year was gold cup. Maybe 27. No, right. It was 17. It was 17. It was 17. 17 yeah, 17. Yeah, that's when. Cause I was playing. Cause I went from playing. Outside back to I was in the midfield in the 2017. So your so your first camp you were playing outside back. I was playing left back. Yeah. Oh shit! And were you playing that for Dallas originally? Yeah, I was playing outside back originally, and then it wasn't until like 2017 is when I started playing back in the midfield. Okay. Okay. Like my first year, I mean, maybe it was 2016, 2017. Yeah, my first years at Dallas, I was playing outside back. Okay, and then you moved inside, and you've been there since. Been there since, and then on occasional, I'll sprinkle in playing outside back. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I midfield. I prefer midfield. Of course, you get the ball, man. You see everything yeah, in the totally middle of the field, like Kellen Acosta, bro. Yeah, you know, you know the vibes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so actually, this is like my little little fanboy moment or whatever. So it was that Gold Cup seventeen, because I was it was a summer going into my senior year. And I was watching that in like one of my boys' apartments or whatever. And it was like y'all's, I want to say like first game in the group stage. So like I had, I don't know who y'all played, but I think you scored a free kick. No, that was that was pre-Gold Cup against uh, Ghana. Okay, so then that's what I was watching then, before the yeah, Gold yeah. Cup. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I remember I, I was like maybe a couple months before that, I'm watching like random MLS games. And I saw it, it was like Dallas, I think DC or Dallas something. And you played. And you were cooking. I'm like, hey, this this dude good. I was telling Oliver that the other day too. Like, yeah. hey, bro, he was kind of good, bro. Let's. I was thinking you were you were not an American because your last name was Acosta. So I'm yeah, like, okay, yeah, right. he playing. He's you know maybe like South American, Spain, something like that. He's not gonna play in the U.S. team. So I'm watching that U.S. Ghana game, and you there. I'm like, okay, I didn't know he's American. Bet. <laughs> <laughs> you, go, you cook, you score, and I'm in my group chat with my friends being like, bro, they, this guy is nice. This guy is, uh, he's going to be on crazy. the scene going forward. I swear to you. Literally, after the Gold Cup, I see y'all, you know, y'all perform. Did y'all, y'all won that work, uh, that Gold Cup? Yeah, we won it. Y'all won that Gold Cup. And then afterwards, I think, like, FIFA 18 had dropped or some shit. So I'm in with my boy, and we playing FIFA, and I, I think we do like the random shit and stuff. And I just picked the U.S. just off rip. And then, you know, the U.S. was a little struggling with the stars. The players weren't, you know, rated that high or whatever. And I'm playing my boy. He like Jeremy or whatever. And I go and I find you and I put your ass into the midfield. That's crazy. I win that game 2-1 and I had you score two bangers, bro. <laughs> like 35 <laughs> yards now with the right, 20 with the left. <laughs> and my boy was so hot. And I'm like, hey, I told you he a problem. <laughs> That's crazy, no, bro. Ollie actually told me about that yesterday. I was like, "What?" He, I was like, "You never told me about this." Yeah, I swear. I thought bro. that was funny. So he meant he told me to uh, to ask you about it, but you went ahead and you know did it already. So oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. And then I was you know telling telling Chef and everything about that too. And then when you had gone to L.A. and he was there, I'm like, "Bro, that's hey, let my boy know I said that." <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. And then here we are, bro, full circle, literally in the group, man. We were talking about that, and we we're just like, bro, like 20-year-old me doing this shit now, he'd be like, what's going on, bro? I'm in the dorm room watching, you know, you play, and then we over here talking ball and talking life. That's how, it, bro, it comes full circle, bro. The world is small. You talk about, like, one degree of separation from anyone in, in the world. I swear. And that's just how it goes. I mean, you could be connected with anyone at any given time. I swear. <laughs> Off of one person, too. One mutual. That's really? all it takes. Damn. But all right, so yeah, you playing, you know, you're in Dallas, you're doing well with the, the national teams whenever you get called up. What? How did you go from Dallas to Colorado? 
Yeah, I got traded. So I was already in Dallas probably for, like I said, six, seven years. And so I just came off of being injured. And I was going through problems with upper management because I had aspirations going to Europe. Okay. And you know, I had some offers on the table for me and they just didn't want to take it because they wanted more money from me. And I'm like, you guys are really effing up my career. This is Dallas? Like, yeah. I need something different. Like you guys, this this high price tag was unheard of back in the day. Like mm-hmm. American players were going overseas for X amount of dollars. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, why are you guys trying to be greedy and do that for me? Yeah. And so I just had an open dialogue with the coach and management. And like, it's like, if you're not going to sell me, then I need a new environment. Mm-hmm. so they traded me to Colorado and like how I, fi- how I found out to, I was going to Colorado was crazy because so we played in Houston. Um, this was literally the 23rd of July. My birthday is the 24th. So okay. it was like a Saturday night. So I stayed the night in, in Houston because my friends and family flew, uh, uh, drove down from Dallas, which is only like a three hour drive to spend the, the night with me and hang out with me. And we went out and stuff and spent my birthday with me on the 24th. So I spent the night mm-hmm. in Houston and I got a phone call from, from my coach. And was like, Hey, I need you to come back to, to Dallas. Like we need to have a meeting. And I'm not thinking much of it. Cause I just played the night before in Houston. Like, obviously I told him like I wanted to change, but I didn't think anything happened. Yeah. And literally on the drive back, my phone is getting flooded with notifications and, and texts. It leaked that I got traded to Colorado. So I didn't even know I was going to trade to Colorado until <laughs> they leaked before anyone could even tell me. Damn. Just, it was crazy. So basically I went back, I drove back from Houston to, to Dallas, went straight to the facility, talked to my coach, told me that they traded me to Colorado. I said my, I did like my whole like goodbye video to Dallas. I go home. I literally had to tell all my friends and family that I'm leaving. They come they come to my house that Sunday night. I leave for Colorado Monday morning. And I'm Jesus gone. Christ. Yeah, it was a quick turnaround. And literally I play in call my my first game of the season, we play in a friendly versus Boca Juniors on Tuesday. So I'm playing in my first game against Boca Junior Tuesday. And then I'm already a Colorado player. So I'm playing on the weekend versus DC United Saturday. And I scored my first goal in my debut on that game. And yeah. yeah and it was just crazy. It was like a whirlwind. It was just yeah. like back to back to In back. In one week, all that happened. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And was like Colorado like a destination that you wanted or like they just. I didn't, that's that's where they sent me. I didn't I didn't have a choice where I went. It was just like that was a deal that they, okay. that they, they just dealt me to Colorado. Okay. So then what was your what was your like life and time like over there in Colorado, both, you know, on the field, yeah. off the field? It was cool, but like when I first got to Colorado, it was, it was a bit crazy because literally two weeks after I was there, my son was born. Okay. So um, I have a five year old son now, but at the time, yeah, he was living in he was in Dallas, and so I literally had to fly out after after a game, took a red eye to go be there at his birth because um, his mom got induced, so I could be there. Mm-hmm there for the birth and everything and I literally was there for like a day and I had to fly out to LA to play in a game so I flew flew out Saturday night got there Sunday he was born on a Sunday flew out Monday uh played again on Tuesday it was just and life in Colorado was cool like it was just it was it was craziness at first then it settled down um you know I was easing into I was getting used to to everything Colorado had to offer um, the city, the people, I was trying to just adapt. And mm-hmm. it was cool. Like it, it was a cool city. Um, my teammates really dope. They they welcomed me. They they made me just feel at home um, mm-hmm. from the jump. And yeah, I mean, I was only there for I don't know, like a few months, and then I was back home in Dallas. Like right when it was the end of the season, I went back straight back home because my son was just born. Yeah, I'd already be back home see my friends and family. And so, and then next year, the following year is when I really got to, you know, dive in to, to, to Colorado, be more outdoorsy, you mm-hmm. know, tackle, you know, I didn't, I never went camping and stuff, but I went to like some ski, ski places to Vail, Aspen, yeah, uh, Breckenridge, 
did some hikes. I mean, I was really channeling my inner yeah. outdoors. You know, I was really tapping in. I was out yeah. there. You embracing uh, it. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I was deep. I was like, I was trying to find Bigfoot type deal. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but yeah, it was cool. It was cool. And I you really were, uh, so your you say your son was born right when you got to Colorado. So yeah, I a guess, couple of weeks later. How did, you know, the fact that you have a son change like your outlook on you know playing and, and life in general yeah i mean it was one of those things that helped me mature because now i see things in a different lens mm -hmm. right stuff that maybe i was doing before i wasn't really doing it because i'm thinking how would that look if my son were to see it and mm -hmm. so I, i'm looking at things way differently i'm like i'm not just some kid anymore you know i gotta grow up to be a man someone that my son can be proud of mm -hmm. you know so i'm a father figure so like some of the stuff that might be looked at being immature, I can't be doing that. So yeah. I, I, I had to grow up real quickly because, you know, like I said, I don't want to be looked at as this immature little boy. Like, I want me to grow up to be like this man that um, that's a reflection of my son. And so mm -hmm. for me, it just, it was, it was just really cool because now, you know, I have a lot more responsibility. So every action I'm thinking of him and every mm -hmm. decision I make, I'm thinking of him. And, you know, not, not only just with um, like physically doing stuff, but just emotionally, financially, and just everything. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to put myself in the right position to, you know, make sure that he can live his best possible life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how is it, is it, you know, kind of difficult see, like being able to see him while in season? No, it was very difficult because um yeah i mean obviously i'm in two different states i'm in colorado he's in texas mm -hmm. um the time zone i was actually a bit fortunate because the flights from dallas to colorado are two hours mm -hmm. going there obviously i lose an hour but coming back i gain an hour mm -hmm. or i gain an hour going there and i lose an hour coming back so i was able to if i had like a day off or two days off i was going straight to dallas okay okay and i could fly back the morning of like a training session. So I'll go from the airport straight to training. Mm -hmm. I was able to to do that because I was able, if I left at seven, I was only getting um, there at eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That made it worthwhile. And so I was able to, to, to do both jobs. So I thought that was, yeah. I was in a unique situation, but I was able to make the most of it. Yeah. Sounds like it too. So yeah. you in Colorado, he, uh, I get, was he coming up too? To, to Colorado and seeing you? Uh, he was too young um, okay. the first years, but like once he got a little bit older, because it's yeah. like technically you can't you can't really travel, um, I think, earlier than six months. So like once he got a little bit older, he was able to travel. His mom would bring him up okay. and they would stay in, in Colorado. And so we were, I was able to spend some more time with him, more than okay. just a day or two. So spend some days together. So it was, it was, um, it was good. It was good to have yeah. him. That sounds blessed. Yeah. So how long were you in Colorado for, seasons-wise? Uh, I joined halfway through the year of 2018. And then I got – I was I left December of 21. Okay. And that was when you went to L.A.? And I, and I was in L.A. in 2022, January 2022. Oh. How'd that, how'd that move happen? It was it kind of the same thing that happened in Dallas or was it more? Yeah, same thing. <laughs> same thing. Same thing. Yeah, I didn't know. So Colorado saying, you know, they couldn't afford me, my salary and stuff. They got to make, they got to, you know, better themselves. So they were trying to deal, deal me to different teams. Okay. And basically LA, you know, put up the highest bid and I was able to come here to LA, but it wasn't, necessarily my choice i kind of got dealt here okay. but um very fortunate i was dealt to an organization of lafc's caliber i mean mm -hmm. it's been top notch since i've been here and i've been enjoying every moment since yeah, yeah yeah so was europe an option going from colorado though yeah in colorado because that was an option i had a deal on the table for me to go to europe but colorado said it's too late we already dealt you to lafc <laughs> Yeah, crazy. So you had an offer. So there was an offer there for a team out in Europe, but you were already sent to LA. Yeah, and I didn't know about it yet. Damn. Yeah. Hey, but it all works out though. 
it, yeah, works it, out it, it all worked out how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Like obviously, it was hard at the time. But in that moment, I think, like I said, it all worked out because I was one, I was able to 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 finish some unfinished business, which was to win an MLS Cup here mm-hmm. in uh, LAFC. I mean, I won everything else. So that was my last thing on the list. Mm-hmm. And being here in LAFC gave me the opportunity to be with the national team. Mm-hmm. and then playing a world cup and you know who's to say if i was in europe things could have been way different who knows yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i agree so, so how was supposed to work out yeah yeah yeah. so your time in la nothing but good vibes everything been good it all seemed, around. from from the outside looking in right you, yeah. you're winning hella games you win hella trophies in your first season or second season my first season this is only first my season. second season. yeah and you're going to to the World Cup on Qatar. Yeah. So, sure. Hey, to me, that shit sounds successful, man. Right. It was. <laughs> it was. It was, uh, it was a hell of a year last year. Yeah. And, um, like, it was just it was just crazy because I'm, like, thinking, like, obviously, I'm I'm coming in to, to LAFC, not thinking much of it, but, like, obviously coming to a great organization. But, like, obviously I'm just, like, going in and playing games. But I'm, like, feeling like we really have a shot of winning. Like, we have a really good team. Yeah. But actually achieving it to winning it, I'm, like, I'm, like, damn, this is just wild. Right. Wild. And that final it, itself final, was wild. Final in itself was just craziness. Yeah. It, everything. <laughs> it was just, it was nuts. It was yeah, nuts. I was here in New Orleans watching that on my TV. I was by myself. And I was wilding out. Like I felt like every moment because there was something going on like every five minutes. Yeah, I mean it had VAR calls to what a red card to um, goals to PKs, last minute goals. Yeah, yeah. Whole night. I mean it had a l- little bit of everything. I mean if Thanks. you you're a casual fan, I mean that might get you into the sport for real because Thanks. that was. It's, I mean, that was similar to what we saw like kind of in the World Cup final um, in Qatar. Yeah, I mean, similar vibe. Somewhere about yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, and also quick shout out, Kellen Costa did score in that final, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that was definitely it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, something light, something light. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so t- go ahead and, uh, and talk about that whole World Cup experience. So did you kind of have an idea that you were going to be, you know, getting that call from Greg um, and going to Qatar? Um, I think for from my standpoint, you, I think the amount of energy and effort and um, that I put into it. I mean, you definitely had hope to be in the world cup squad, but you, yeah. you don't know until, you know, I mean, yeah. for me, I was in, I was in most camps. I, and I think in back in 2021, 2022, um, I had like the, the record of most games, like in a, in a year since like uh, DeMarcus Beasley, I played in like oh, 20 shit. something games, I think yeah. the national team. Um, so it was a really great year and I'm like, I put a lot of effort and, um, just energy into this and mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm hoping that, you know, that can go a long way. Yeah. Um, but like I said, it wasn't one of those things you don't know until you know, mm-hmm. until like it's in your nervous, you don't know, like it's coming out to the wire, you're like what's going on mm-hmm. and, and to able to you know, get that phone call from Greg to let letting me know that I was going to the World Cup. I mean, it was just kind of a surreal feeling. Yeah. And it was a it was a weird moment for me because I want to say weird is a word because I just win the I just won the final mm-hmm. on that Saturday. Just won the final. Sunday we have Saturday night we go out, whatever, whatever. Sunday we're having a parade. And I, I'm like still drunk, and I get a FaceTime call from <laughs> Burr Hall too. <laughs> talk about your, it's like <laughs> talk about the World Cup, and I'm like, huh? Yeah, World Cup. Woo. <laughs> it's coming up. And he's like, yeah, I'm gonna need you to rest up because it was a quick turnaround. Cause I had to take a red eye Tuesday, cause I was going to New York for the launch party, and then Qatar Wednesday night. Damn. But, so it's it's a dub parade, one day break. dub party. I think parade was Monday. I think Sunday or Monday, or Sunday. Pack was Monday. Hitting, that, hitting that liquor. He can't remember the Eve days. Tuesday. Yeah, it was just like, <laughs> yeah, it was something like that. I think along those lines. Yeah. Damn. Okay. And then you went out there to the to the Ross reveal party or whatever. 
Yeah, that was on, I want to say Wednesday. So I left Tuesday, Tuesday evening. To okay. New York Red Eye. And I got in Wednesday morning, did a bunch of media stuff Wednesday, um, Rosserville party in the evening. And then we took a, a, a Red Eye flight that night to go to Qatar. Y'all, oh, y'all left from New York straight out, straight after? Yeah, straight out. Oh, shit. Okay. That was a huge turnaround. Yeah. Wow. And then you're out there. And how long were you out there um, before the the first match? So I got there. So that the final was like November 6th or something. Mm-hmm. And so we leave, what, through like the 9th, November 9th. And I forget what the first game might have been like a few days before Thanksgiving. Because I think we played – we played England on on Black Friday. Yeah, or something. yeah, yeah. So so, yeah. We must have played like the Sunday before Black Friday. So I want to say it was like the twentieth or something. Twenty. So I was there for a couple of weeks. Damn. And so go ahead and speak on speak on that experience. World Cup in Qatar, man. I bet you've never been to Qatar, right? So that's just. <laughs> I've been to Dubai, so I'm like, I'm thinking like I was gonna be like Dubai, but yeah. like I have my reservations going to Qatar because. Uh, the climate of the country everyone was talking about, like, one, is going to be literally the climate is going to be hot. Yeah. Two, people were nervous about, you know, labor laws and people were dying, building stadiums and mm-hmm. women's rights and, um, you know, um, the LGBTQ community. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you had all these negative things surrounding Qatar. Mm-hmm. But all I can say is when I got to Qatar, man, what a place. <laughs> I, it was beautiful. I couldn't believe it. It wasn't as – I mean, there were some days it was hot, but overall, I mean, the, the country was beautiful. Our accommodations were amazing. The stadiums were top. Our facilities mm-hmm. were great. So, overall, I'm, like, thinking, like, this is just – this is amazing here. Like, yeah. this is – like, I'm, like – it's one of those things where I'm, like, I'm looking everywhere. I'm looking, turning. It's, like, World Cup this, World Cup that. And I'm, like, thinking, like, I'm really here at a World Cup. Like, yeah. I'm not watching. Man, like I'm part of the team. Yeah. Like this this is crazy. And I'm like, you know, I'm not a starter on the team, but I'm like, I'm eager and ready to whenever I get my name called, like, you know, I'm gonna be ready to go out there and make the most of it. Mm-hmm. And so I was able to make my World Cup debut in the first game versus Wales. Mm-hmm. Uh, tied that game. I didn't suit up versus England. I was there, but I didn't play. And then I played in the the final group stage game versus um, Iran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, lock in that result. And yes, I played in two games. I didn't play against Holland, but you know, for me, it was a huge achievement to to being a part of the World Cup squad and, you know, um logging in some minutes, being a part of the team that advanced. Mm-hmm. Obviously collectively as a team, we wanted to achieve more, but overall, I mean, um, you know, not being and participating in last year's or last World Cup, um, yeah. you know, it was a step in the right direction. And, um, you know, building momentum for 26 coming up here in the States. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, how you were saying, like, in the beginning, back in Dallas, you get butterflies, you'd be a little nervous and stuff. And then it became calm and it became calm all the way through. But at the World Cup, did you get a little bit, you know, a little, little nervous? I was nervous in every game, every game. <laughs> it was the World Cup. I, I was, like, trying to shake it off. I'm like, this is, this is really the World Cup. Like, this is something, you know, I've always talked about, like, I want to make a professional debut. But as a kid – you you watch the World Cup. It doesn't matter, even if yeah. you're not even a soccer fan, everyone watches the World Cup or at least yeah, knows yeah. about the World Cup. And I'm like, I'm here gonna plan it. Like that's different. Yeah. Right? Always it is dates back from me being a kid, you know, when everyone's talking about, you know, you're in the backyard scoring a goal, you're like counting down five seconds left, last free kick of the game. Yeah. USA versus World Cup final. Like I'm thinking of those moments in my head as a kid to now being here in a world cup, maybe, I mean, hopefully going to experience something like that, but actually just being in a world cup, I'm like thinking like, this is surreal. Like, this is crazy. Yeah. 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 Man. What an accomplishment though. And yeah, it was, no, it was amazing. And then having my, my family there to experience it with me, it was just, it was beautiful. I mean, it was an experience of a lifetime and something I'll cherish for the rest of my life. Of course. Of course. So Going in, I guess, forward to what this season in the MLS and seasons later on and camps later on, what kind of aspirations do you have for yourself, um, you know, in the next couple of years? Yeah, for me, finish this year off strong um, with okay. LAFC. We have, obviously, we, we lost in the Conca Champions final, mm-hmm. which was, has a sour taste on our mouth, but we still have opportunity to, 
to raise some other trophies. So we have Campeones Cup versus Tigres coming up in, in a month. And, you know, we're, we're looking to, to, to keep our title as reigning champs. Mm-hmm. And so that's something we have sights on. And for me, I'm out of contract at the end of the year, so I'm not sure what the future holds um, for myself. But, you know, I still have aspirations of playing in Europe someday, so maybe I'll be, be able to achieve that. And okay. then I still want to play in another World Cup. I mean, I still – I'm not, you know, too far away from achieving that. And, mm-hmm. you know, I got to, you know, buckle down and work harder because – you know, everyone is trending, you know, in this direction. So I need to, to move accordingly, especially, you know, guys playing for the respective teams doing really, really well. And, you know, um, you know, the coaching staff has a, a tough job on their hands because I feel like everyone's been doing a, a great job. And so, I mean, I think it's important for us to make the coach's job super hard on who yeah. he wants to pick. But for me, I got to put myself in a good position to to do just that. So, Hopefully, yeah, uh, you know, I'm, you know, I'm in the right environment to, to, to play in a World Cup, another World yeah, Cup. Yeah. That's what I'm, I'm shooting for in the future. Okay, hey, those sound like solid aspirations to me, man. <laughs> Basically, like two big things, kind of, I want to talk, like, you know, hear from you about is one, obviously, the fashion drip is crazy, and uh-huh. two, the community service kind of aspect, you know, because I see you working a lot with, um, what, what is it, the, the amputee team. Yeah, I do a lot, and I, I established my own foundation as well this year. Yeah, perfect. So go ahead. Go crazy. Talk yeah, about it. so the foundation, I mean, from my standpoint, I think just how I was growing up, I mean, I'm growing up just, just leaving, you know, you, the place that you're, you're, you're at, the community that you're around, better than what you found it. And I mm-hmm. think I have a responsibility as an athlete to leave a, a, a positive imprint and um, it, for me in the past, I mean, I've, I've partnered um, and collaborated with not only just like my current team, but organizations that the team has utilized, whether it's, you know, Special Olympics to um, Global Down Syndrome to any type of community outreach, um, um, food drives. And, you know, from my standpoint, um, you know, that was amazing. I thought that was huge. But I think for me, I wanted to do things my own way. And okay. so back in February, um, I launched my uh, foundation. Um, I, want, well, I established it in February. I just launched it this past um, July. I mean, for me, my, my whole standpoint is to um, serve underprivileged youth Um with or without disabilities through sport and education okay and so my biggest thing for me is soccer has been my whole life Mm -hmm. it's given me basically everything i've met some amazing people i've visited you know places all around the world and it's given me this huge opportunity um to give back and so i want to use sport to not only give people an avenue of just being athletic, giving them an avenue to have structure, have belief, um, have camaraderie. Cause we live uh, in a society where there's so much division. Mm-hmm. And so I want to do soccer, which is the world sport um, to help kind of break that sy- systemic um, viewpoint of we're all being divided because soccer, especially being in a world cup, you know, no matter what your differences are, you're connected through the game that you love. And so I want right. to give, back, give that back here and, um, you know, um, in certain communities to just help better them. Um, and I think, you know, the youth is our future. So I really want to attack the youth. And what better way is giving them more accessibility to the sport that yeah. I know we know and we love and to give them opportunities to, um, you know, further better their their situations because you're better than what your environment is. I mean, mm-hmm. you don't have to just be um, what you're surrounded by. You don't have to just work at your your parents' restaurant or yeah. your family's business. You you don't have to be a drug dealer, a gang, but you know, you're bigger than what you surround yourself in. And I just wanted to give the kids belief. And yeah, so yeah. using that to... I want to build fields all over the U.S. I have two fields here in L.A. coming up, two in Denver. Um, I'm going to have programming there um, to have clinics and other sort of things uh, for the community to to be involved in. 
And from then on, I'm hoping to establish programming to give them higher education and so on and so forth. And I've partnered with various organizations and, and local communities. So, um, yeah, we're going to stay tuned for all of that. And hopefully um, there's going to be this whole blow up of, of fields and programming and um, educational resources for, for kids throughout the throughout the U.S. Yeah, no, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, appreciate it. How, uh, I, I, like, what kind of got you to do exactly that? Like, what made you think of, you know, that's exactly what <clears throat> I want to do? There's a lot of just brainstorming over the years. I think from my standpoint, like I said, I've, I've partnered with, um, you know, whether it's LAFC, FC Dallas, Colorado, and I felt like I am just part of their entity. And I'm selfishly, I want to do one I want to get my name more out there because I feel like I'm doing a lot of the legwork for the, for these guys. Yeah. yeah. I want to do it my way. Like, obviously I'm, I'm joining causes I want to be a part of, but I I think for my, I want to narrow it down and attack certain things I want to attack. And that's why I really wanted to, um, you know, leave an imprint. And, And one, another thing is I want kids to really believe that they can be just like me. Mm -hmm. And I think one other way is being present, right? It's different if it's like, oh, LFC is is committed to, you know, um, better in the community, but there's no figure of that. Yeah, right? yeah. I want to be that figure, right? It's like you got to think of why do kids want to be like certain athletes? Mm-hmm. Not only for what they have, it's for what they do, right? Mm-hmm. For me, I, I, I idolize LeBron James, not only for what he's done as a player, but his longevity, his career, but his imprint that he's lived on his communities back mm-hmm. in Akron and, um, you know, established the I Promise School, all this ph- ph- philanthropic work to, you know, stuff that he's just doing globally. And I'm like, yeah. I want to be just like that because he's bigger than an athlete and he established his whole campaign of more than an athlete. And I'm thinking that's me too. So why, yeah. why can't I do um, similar things to what he's doing, but in the soccer world. And so I kind of want to be the LeBron James in, in, in that sense in the soccer in the soccer industry mm-hmm. yeah, yeah yeah no that's that's blessed bro not too many people are thinking like that too and you were saying that you've been kind of brainstorming for a couple of years on this so yeah just my back. whole career but it's like I was more so soccer driven mm-hmm. um that I, I spent most of my time just focused on that but now as I'm getting older and I'm transitioning to finding out what I'm really interested in mm-hmm. and what I want to accomplish. And now I've kind of narrowed it down to this is something that I want to do. And so I'm putting, um, you know, more of my energy and not only just on the field, but into to other things that I'm in, I'm invested in and, yeah. and the community side is part of that. Yeah, and like yeah. for the fashion side as well. It's mm-hmm. something that, that, uh, you know, I, I love, I've been loving, I've been loving clothes and mainly shoes since I was straight out the womb. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love sneakers, man. Sneakers has been my biggest thing. I've grown up. <clears throat> if I had a new pair of sneakers, I'd go to sleep with them. Type yeah. deal. I love, <laughs> I love them, and you know, whatever. If it was a, you know, my birthday's coming up or Christmas, I'm like, I'm the type of deal. Like, hey, hey, mom, hey, dad, can you instead of you guys all giving me individual gifts, can you guys all come together, pitch in, and give me some shoes? That's it. That's all. That's all. Kel that's wanted. all I wanted. That's all I wanted. <laughs> shoes and clothes. Well, my grandma was the one that usually bought me clothes, so I'm like, all I need is the shoes to go with the clothes. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So, yeah. so how many pairs of shoes you got right now, present day? I probably got a few hundred, easy. Like nah, you lying? <laughs> you lying? Three hundred or so. Yeah, yeah. Bro, I thought I had a problem, bro. I got like maybe <laughs> maybe twenty five over here. <laughs> Yeah, I got quite a few. I I used to have more, but they it, my collection kind of shrunk a bit. Yeah, um, now I've been kind of focused on being presentable from head to toe. So now I'm okay. not only just just focused on the shoes part, but now I've been you know the past some years been diving in more into to clothes. Okay, and so head to toe, I'm trying to be more and more presentable because before yeah. I'd be like, black tee, black jeans, here's some shoes. <laughs> Easy <laughs> my fit. But now I'm like, all right, all right, all right. Let me, let me, let me put something together. Let me cook up something real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. put that shit on. <laughs> yeah, facts, facts. <laughs> so how did you, I guess, uh, get into like wanting to like dress well and like, you know, look presentable and all that? Like, was it from a young age? 
Yeah, from a young age, I've always kind of paid attention. I'm a type of deal, a uh, type of deal. I'm a type of dude that, you know, before like I'm meeting someone, I'm like, I'm kind of like looking them up and down. I'm like, what's on your feet first? So I can kind of tell what type of person you are based up based upon what shoes you're wearing. Oh, damn. <laughs> I, but I'm like, if you got like some busted, like there's a difference between like you're a skater and you're wearing Vans and they kind of bust it up. But if you're yeah. just like wearing some busted up shoes, I'm like, oh, your hygiene's a little off. That's <laughs> I'm crazy. Like, so you're, judging, you're judging hygiene off of what the shoe is. Yeah, just, or I'm judging personality. I'm like, you, you're the type that doesn't care about appearance or you don't. So if you don't care about appearance, you don't care about certain things. True. Okay. Okay. Hey, that's, I might have to start using that, man. Start looking around. Yeah, but it's true though. It's like, could, could jobs do the same way? It's like, Thanks. like if you, if you, if you act irrationally in this regard for this certain situation, what's to say you won't act irrationally for this, for this in the, in the workplace, no, it goes, it, it goes both ways. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. for me, I do the same thing with with clothes, and I'm like, I'm looking at someone that's put together. I'm like, okay, one, they're they really care about their hygiene. Two, they're very presentable, so they feel more approachable. There's a reason why, um, it's people get grossed out with someone that is homeless, right? Based yeah. upon hygiene, and they're not a, they're not bad people by any means, but yeah. people feel a little reserved on getting approached by them because of how they present themselves. Yeah. I know that's a tough example to to bring up, but it it has a lot of truth to it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So I, I kind of carry that along with, you know, all aspects. So I'm, I pride myself on trying to be as presentable as possible because I want people to to warm up the, to me, have open dialogue with me, and, mm -hmm. you know, just be comfortable with me. And so yeah, I yeah. really found that there's a lot of importance in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you just want to be more approachable. That's what it comes to. But yeah, then, exactly. You putting on some some fits, dog. I think it was like one one uh, pregame. You had like a like a bedazzled jacket, or like that thing was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was just so. No, I mean now now I've been a little bit flashier. Yeah, okay. Uh, with my with my pregame fits, I mean I, I feel like I'm more reserved person, but I think I've I've really adopted the fact I want. I think people nowadays are are wearing clothes that don't really fit their personality. Mm -hmm. And that it's like, for me, I really pride myself on, it's like, I want to wear the clothes rather than clothes wear me. Thanks. And so I really pride myself on being versatile in my attire because I feel like on the field, I'm, I'm a versatile player where I can play in multiple positions. And so what better way of expressing who I am through clothes? And so I'm showing yeah. people that, you know, I can wear a suit one day to sweats another day to a bedazzled jacket another day. Just to show the <laughs> versatility off a little bit. Let people know I got a little bit of flavor in all yeah. realms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Out of all the players that you've played with, you obviously going to put yourself at number one. <laughs> Claus has got to be number one. So who's who's at the two, three, four spot? Two, three, four spot. And you could even do a five if it's too tight. That I, that I played with? Yeah, played. Um, national team, I love Tim Weah. Mm -hmm. He really, he's really put together. He, he Yeah, he, he put that shit on. <laughs> yeah, he really do. He got his own style. Yeah. Uh, I like Seb Ibiaga. Mm -hmm. He got his own style. Um, I really admire that as well. And he he puts it on as well. Um, I think uh, Chris Richards is another guy that that, oh. that low key style like he really he really doing his thing. Yeah, you gotta pay more attention to him. Okay, um, DeAndre, mm -hmm. yeah, um, from um Inter Miami. I'm trying to think who Kurt he got is. some fits, bro. I, some things, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't wear. Not gonna lie, like the little old it, yeah. But that's what it's about. I think I really admire people that are going out their way to showcase what they think style is, and what theirs is too, and what theirs is. And I yeah. think, I think style is like a form of art, right? Right. You got artwork. You look at freaking um, Picasso to uh, what's it, Da Vinci. 
the no, different I don't know art to be honest. <laughs> Whoever the dude that did like think of like the Mona Lisa to oh, like yeah 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 like people find beauty in that but that's way different than like Andy Warhol who did like more like an abstract type of art right okay. it's way it's way different and I think style and fashion is the same way like what I might think is fashionable you might not think is fashionable yeah but there's yeah, beauty yeah. in that because I think you have an appreciation for someone that's wearing menswear that's wearing like a tailored suit to like mm -hmm. a maybe like a Tim Weah who's flashier that can wear you know baggier fits to chains and all that and I think yeah, yeah, yeah. both things and I think that's important for for fashion and um I'm trying to think if there's anyone that wears like a tailored suit pretty often but um uh, I can't think off the top of my head Okay, Jordan, hey, that's a strong list. But yeah, yeah, they're all. I mean, those guys all dress similarly, mm -hmm. in, in a sense. I mean, they have, they bring their own flair and flavor to it. But yeah, yeah, I kind of appreciate a little bit of everything. I think that's what style is all about. Is for me, I'm able to kind of just, um, just in the different cultures and people I've been around, kind of just grabbing a little bit of of everything and trying to implement that into to my closet and my wardrobe. And I think that's cool. And I think. Yeah. Whether it's men, menswear to being flashy with change to maybe just uh, African flair to, you know, European. I remember when drop crotch pants were hot and I used to wear those too, that European <laughs> flair. I mean, it's true though. You you you, yeah. you grab and pick, you know, different little things. You try to implement that as much as possible. And I think that's just cool overall. Yeah, 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 for sure. Do you see yourself, you know, when the game's over and everything, you think you're going to go into that industry? Little fashion industry um, is it's tough because it's a saturated market. I feel like everyone's mm -hmm. trying to tap into it, okay. and sometimes it's about who you know, not what you know. Yeah, and, and I think it's a difficult market because, in a sense, I don't know if I would ever be able to design my own clothes. Like I, I have appreciation of what I think fashion is, but commercially to like sh actually sell it to like the overall consumer, I don't know if I'll be any good at it. Mm -hmm. Like all great things I would wear, but I don't know necessarily I'd be able to sell it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, which is I think the most difficult part of it. Okay. But um I'll be a consultant if someone wants to ask <laughs> my <few cents. laughs> hey, I do, listen. But yeah, I think I mean I think being a stylist is cool too. Mm -hmm. I think there's really good stylists out there that do a really great job. And I feel like that would be a cool thing to do or be yeah, like yeah, a buyer, yeah. buy like be a personal shopper and, and buy things for people. Hey, um, bro. I listen, look if I gotta if I gotta go on a little date or something, bro, and I'm about to put something on, I'm gonna send you a photo and I'm gonna need some consultation. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Man, nah, listen, you bro, bro, I need to make sure. <laughs> in New Orleans, where you guys headed? You guys headed to what? Uh, bourbon? Nah, <laughs> nah, we ain't doing no bourbon, bro. <laughs> I'm putting my worst fit on for that. <laughs> it's dirty over there, right? <laughs> bro, it's so nasty, bro. I'm wearing like my real beater beaters. Like, not even the beaters. The beaters got beaters, bro, for bourbon. Beaters got beaters for real, bro. <laughs> Man, yeah, bro. I've been there once. I was like, damn, where am I at? Really? Yeah. How old are you? Uh, I was, it was like a few years ago. I went for one of my best friend's older brother's wedding. He got married oh, cool. in New Orleans. Yeah, we were out there. And I, the crazy city. thing was, this is the so you remember the 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 Popeyes chicken sandwich? Yeah, the, the one that went hot. Yeah, right. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. when people were dying over them, right? People were getting fought over. Yeah. I go to the wedding, right? And I haven't, I hadn't even had one yet. Okay. Oh, they had that catered there. And I thought I was like, <laughs> I was going nuts, bro. I was like trying not to look too black, bro. I was like, over <laughs> at the, I was hovering. <laughs> I was like, yo, I ate one. I'm like, damn, I got to get another. They but, hit. They were good as hell. They were so good. <laughs> they catered them, bro. I'm like, one was like, like gold. Yeah. Bro, they had like hundreds of them. I thought I was like, oh, what is going on? You should have grabbed <laughs> some, took it to the street, sold it, made it made a little. Made I, I thought about it. You telling them what, what, <laughs> they're in my pockets type deal. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna catch you. <laughs> where'd y'all, where'd y'all uh, go out in New Orleans? I don't even remember, bro. Um, well, we stayed. Day. I was there for a few days. Oh. I got there like on Thursday, and we were Thursday, Friday, Saturday. 
I left Sunday. It was a whirlwind. I mean, I couldn't even tell you. Yeah, that was my yeah. first time there, so I had really had no idea of the spots that we went to. Okay. But he like got married in this like he like rented out like this like um like this motel type thing. Okay. And it was dope. it was like really? it wasn't like like crusty motel. It was like one of those like 70s, 80s motel that had like that little aesthetic. Oh, okay. It was yeah, cool. Yeah. It was cool. It wasn't like yeah. a little motel six type deal. It yeah, wasn't yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was dope though. It was super dope. Nah, that's lovely. Hey, okay. So we'll go ahead and ask a little little couple more questions. Uh we'll do like a uh, you know, kind of get to know Cal. Um, and then a couple of the uh Instagram questions. So first question, favorite artist all time. Yeah, it's probably J. Cole or Drake. Okay. All right, top three. Actually, no. Favorite song from each? Oh, probably Damn J. Man, Cole, man. probably Rise and Shine. Okay. Um, Drake. Uh, Damn, that boy's stressing over this. Probably Company. Bro, that's a two. <laughs> That's a two, bro. Company, that, that used to be like my uh my wake up alarm. I was like, no way, be in a good mood. <laughs> <laughs> I need oh, some God. company, <laughs> Ooh, bro. He was singing on that. Damn. <laughs> favorite album, then Drake's favorite album. Top down, no skips. There's only one right answer, too. Take care. Oh, see, that's the mainstream answer, though. Everybody be on that. Take yeah, care. nothing was the same. Is that what you gonna say? Was, nothing was the same. Top yeah, down. Take care. Off. Nothing was the same. It was, those are like they neck and neck. Bro, take. Care. I mean, nothing was the same. Top down. Play that shit. Top down. No skips. Maybe get a little glass of red in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. Oh man. I, yeah. Tuscan leather. Oh no. Furthest thing. Furthest thing is my tune. For, bro, that's the, bro, you, you're hitting all the right ones, man. None of this mainstream shit. I was trying to. It's been a minute since I listened to the album, but the furthest thing had me in a chokehold for real. When it first sure. came out, I was no, I was listening to uh, uh, come through. I remember that because I was dating this girl uh, at college. So I used to I used to date this girl. She was in college at Texas Tech. Five mm -hmm. hours, right? I used to cruise down with my boy Texas Tech, and we used to just bump. Uh, uh, come through and nothing like whole nothing was the same album just on repeat for like five Damn, hours. that boy was in his lover boy bag crazy <laughs> what bro, i was driving five hours i was like it don't matter saturday night i'm playing a game saturday night after the game i'm driving to lubbock five hours like nothing happened cruising crazy listen to drake yeah listen to drake <laughs> I, real I was down, bad. <laughs> down bad for real <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's crazy, man. Was that the first love? It'd be like that. It'd be like that. Yeah, I would say so. That was when I was, I was like early twenties. Oh, before that. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was <laughs> early days, early days, early days. Early days, man. Now you learned a lot. <laughs> we not yeah. driving five hours. Yeah, nah, nah, you talking about ten years ago? I'm a different man, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Favorite tat that you got? Because that's an Instagram question. A lot of people were asking about that. Favorite tattoo? Yeah. Uh, probably my ribs. It's my okay. parents' birthdays. And there's the verses that honor that father and that mother. Okay. So, I mean, my parents made a lot of sacrifices to get to where I'm at today. So I, I owe them a lot of credit from the driving me to trainings to making sure I was well fed, you know, keeping up with my sneaker game. Yeah. To, you know, all, all the things. They, they did a great job and I, I owe them a lot um, to, to where I'm at today for real. So. Okay. Shout out to mom and dad. Thanks. Shout them out. And uh, what was the first tat? Um, first tat was uh, a tribal on my on my wrist. I actually, one my mom because my whole family was super against it, but my mom was the one that took me to get it. Really? So, yeah. It started off. I I got a henna first. Okay. And then because I was like begging her, I was like seventeen or something. I was like begging. I was like, please, like I don't want anything else but this tattoo. <laughs> Maybe get a henna first. You got the henna. I'm like, oh, that's cool, but I'm like, I'm ready. <laughs> oh, yeah, for the room. Ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for the room. So then she, yeah, she took me to get my tat. 
Um, then I got a got a tribal and a, a verses. On the inside is uh, I can do all things through stri- uh, through Christ who strengthens me. Okay. And so something that I believe in. I'm, I'm very religious. I'm strong in my faith. Okay. And yeah, and I you know I feel like like I said I could, like what the verse says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me no matter what obstacle comes my way mm-hmm. and you know I if I'm strong with Him I can conquer anything. Facts. Damn, you really live by that one. Seventeen years yeah. old, ten years later, you did it yeah. all. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Hey man, but hey, listen, Kel, thank you for joining um, the pod, man. You spilled a lot of game, shared your story. We appreciate that. I know, I know, a lot of people going to tune into this. Um, and yeah, man, I'm just excited to put this one out, bro. It was a long yeah, time, bro. <laughs> Let's go. Let's yeah. go. No, yeah, I appreciate you for having me. I'm glad uh, our schedules could align and get this working and Thanks. get this going. And yeah, you stay off of Bourbon Street. Right? Hey, I don't, I don't want to see. I don't want to see no no Snapchats, no Instagrams of you chilling on Bourbon Street talking nah. about. <laughs> talk uh, about crappy Lil Wayne type dude. So you stay you stay off of there. If not, if, if you are, put on your work boots, all right? Hey, facts the beaters, beaters. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, I'm gonna be in my bag, bro. I'm in the books only. That's it. <laughs> Respect. Respect. I like that. <laughs>